Okay, now I'm on to my last issue. And for you tuning in, most of you will be tuning in for this part, which is no sound. And typically, or historically, can be traced down to this um, it's NEC um, amplifier chip down there. Uh, what happens is it warms up, cools off, warms up, cools off, and it causes the um, the solder joints to break loose. So let me flip it over and show you. Oh, and you got you have three of them on my model. Depending on your model, you may have more or less. So there's one there on this upper board, which is the rear speaker amplifier, and then down at the very bottom board, you can see one right down there. And then there's one over here somewhere. But let me show you on the bottom of the board what I found. Now this is the bottom of the board. Thankfully this unit has an access panel. And you see this square diagram here and a square diagram here with the staggered um, you know, uh, solder lugs. That's those NEC chips. Now let me do, I'm going to switch over and take a macro photograph of what I found. And initially, looking at it, everything looked fine until I looked very closely. Okay, so the reason why these uh, solder joints fail is because uh, heating and cooling and dissimilar metals and because they're probably uh, lead-free solder, they wind up cracking like that. And uh, I haven't plugged this in since I picked it up because of the physical damage. Uh, but if it didn't have the physical bit damage and I, I plugged it in, I think there would be no symptoms here because mine weren't bad enough. But if they get to the point where they're really breaking loose, they can wind up taking out other components with them. So I resoldered each one of them. And when you do that, be careful that you don't wind up bridging between two pins. And I used my vintage roll of, uh, of uh, 6040 leaded solder. So now that's not lead-free solder, but leaded solder, and it should alleviate any future problems. Other places to look at, though mine look fine, would be uh, the relays, which are the speaker relays. Uh, somewhere here. I don't know. have to look on the other side of the board, but sometimes they break loose. Mine are fine. And any other larger transistors that may not have a heat sink, but everything else on here looks good. Okay, now to uh, resolder that amplifier chip there. I've got to remove this board, get it out of the way, remove this center brace, and then that board. So it's going to entail taking all these screws out along here that hold the back of this board. Screws inside here. There's a plastic standoff. There's a clip up top on this side. You got to squeeze that. You got to undo the connectors. Lift this board out of here, take out the center brace, get that out of here. Then that lower board has two screws, but also the uh, amplifier ICs are screwed to the heat sink. You got to unscrew all of them, undo two connectors, and then that whole board will lift out. And then when I go to put it back together, I have to clean off all this heat, white heat sink grease and thermal grease, and then put new thermal grease on it during the assembly. Okay, here's the rear amplifier board that I removed. This is that NEC chip that gives the problems. And what I found is that um, it looked to me like this board had been removed once before and a few of these had been resoldered, like three of them, not the whole bank. So I redid the whole bank and also along here there's some small resistors um, underneath there and surprisingly actually they're on this side here uh, 
they looked a little iffy. Um, they're like 1 8 watt resistors, so I kind of doubt they got that hot. But I just went ahead and touched them up anyway, and any time there was anything that was even slightly questionable, it's easier just to touch it up, put a reflow a little solder on there. So this board is ready to go back into the unit. Okay, now I'm going to be putting the board back in. Now on the larger transistors, there is an insulator sheet that must be in there. Just notice on the back there, they're metal. <clears throat> And that is part of the circuit of the of the uh, transistor. And if it hits the ground, it's kind of all over for you. Uh, another thing that makes me believe that this board was pulled out before is it seems to me that there's the old original grease underneath the insulators. Uh, there is no insulator on the, the smaller... Um, transistor that's uh, plastic on the back it's not metal uh, but <clears throat> you notice that there was a, there's a much runnier um, thermal grease that was used it's not as thick as the paste from the original um, so it looks to me like he left the insulators in place but added new grease on the transistor uh, I had to buy a tube of thermal paste of this type. It's the white silicone type. You could use uh, <clears throat> thermal paste for like if you have a, for your CPU on a computer. Uh, don't recommend it. It's, it's probably going to be too thick. Uh, so uh, let me get these back in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the insulators and everything. And I'm going to clean everything up new grease with the insulators on there and then I'm going to put uh, grease on the back of the uh, transistors and then get it back together. Okay, here's how I do the power ICs. Uh, first of all, I don't work from the tube. I put some on the surface and then I will uh, spread it evenly across the ICs go down each one and then you'll let them sit and the paste is thick but it's it's still somewhat fluid so it'll start to level out for you and then put the I put the insulator on line it up with the hole and uh, work my way down to, to push out any air bubbles so that there's full contact with the insulator and then I carefully smear up the insulator with more thermal compound you have to do both sides um, and typically once this is glued down or uh, has the paste there it'll pretty much stay put as you're spreading the thermal compound if you need to you can nudge it back into place but you'll find that it stays put pretty well alright I have thermal compound thermal paste where needed I threaded my screws through and now to try to get it into place without making a big mess. Can't do it with one hand, so I'm going to turn the camera off right now. Okay, it's in place. If you're working on one of these, you're going to want to use a small screwdriver. These, these two screws are a bugger to get to, but especially this one with this relay in the way. Use a smaller screwdriver to get it uh, all the way down, and then use your regular size screwdriver to do the final snug up on those otherwise everything went in pretty easily and if you happen to have one of these tool sets uh, it did make it a whole lot quicker snugging those down just don't over tighten those screws they have a lock washer on them just get them real snug you don't want to go splitting anything there and then ruining your work okay powered it up we have power all functions seem to be working okay. Looks good. Speaker switch is good. Uh, let me take it upstairs to the stereo room and hook up a pair of speakers to it. Okay. Is testing out a okay? It's not a 
radio stations. Pulls in the stations real well, uh, considering I am out in the middle of nowhere. And as far as switch over to the DVD, so we can Dolby Digital. Uh, there is a way of changing the surround. Uh, normal surrounds best. And it is decoding for surround just fine. Uh, at first it wasn't, as it turns out, um, my DV Blu-ray player was set on um, PCM. Switched it over to Bitstream and it began decoding no problem at all. So this this is fixed, this is all good. Going to just do a little cosmetic cleaning, though it doesn't really need it. And uh, this one I will probably put up for sale. Because that other Yamaha that I have, I'm going to be keeping that one. So, well, if you liked this video, found it helpful, or at least found it enjoyable, please like, share, and above all, subscribe. I appreciate you viewing, and I will see you next time.